everybody welcome back and today we're going to be talking about being in a relationship when you struggle with mental illness oh my goodness it is tough not gonna lie i would never lie to you guys um why is it tough well I think relationships under normal circumstances can be tough, but put uh, one or two people who struggle with their mental health, I mean, there's further complications. That I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion, but that's how I felt. I mean, I've been dating a long time <laughs> and I've always had mental illness and I have come to you know, understand that the more and more and more I learn about me and what I need and what helps me and what makes me happy and my diagnosis, um, the kind of like more specifics I discover about myself and what I need from a partner that I'm dating or in a relationship with. Um, this is one of my like top five questions I get asked um, because I think I think a lot of people, when, especially when someone's really open about their mental illness, they just assume you're single because there's so much taboo and stigma and stereotypes like why, how can you be in a relationship if you are so open with your mental health? Um, well, surprise, I am in a long-term committed relationship <laughs> and this isn't a secret to him, he is aware of everything <laughs> and I think it's like important to talk about because I find that people, um, you know, sometimes people have an idea of what they want their life to look like and then they get a bombshell of the news which is they are diagnosed with a mental illness and then your, your vision of your life kind of splits with the original dream and desires up top and then this weird like middle part of uncertainty and doubt and then a bunch of crap at the bottom that you will just settle for and part of that is a relationship because sometimes when we're diagnosed with mental illness especially in the beginning your uh, self-worth and your value feels like it's being chipped away because you are damaged right <laughs> um that is a common word and i think a, uh, a lot of times people you know especially like because i know when i was in hospital i was told that i shouldn't date for like you know uh, at least a year um, obviously like life is amazing and magical and things happen um, so that's not the case for everybody but especially in that time you know you're going through so much that sometimes you you know we people who struggle with mental illness end up in relationships that are just less than desirable they can be abusive manipulative controlling um, not good not of quality and it's okay because we learn from it and we come out stronger on the other side but I feel that uh, it matters when you have mental illness, it really, really does matter who you're with. For me personally, it was really important that I be with somebody and share my life with somebody that wasn't going to manipulate me on my mental illness or control me by like using that um, and hindering my treatment or hindering my recovery, setting me back because uh, as you know with mental illness you can take 10 steps back and just like that you can take or sorry 10 steps forward and just like that you can take 20 steps back nothing is guaranteed that's what i learned with my mental health nothing is guaranteed and you you can't it's not healthy for you to be with somebody who uh acts as a catalyst um to you know destroy everything that you've built up or that you're trying to build up and that's where i found you know i found myself just with people who brought out the worst in me uh and the minute i i cut them out it's like i was because it you know it just it was very clear that, that was not who i was i was just in an environment i was in a situation um this happens to a lot of people so my favorite quote that i heard has nothing to do with mental illness but it perfectly sums up for me what it's like to be in a relationship with mental illness. You know how people say that relationships are 50-50? So this like quote said, relationships are not 50-50. Sometimes you need to be with someone who can give the 90% when you can only give 10. And I thought that was so true and so accurate. Like, yes, because I know for me, when I'm having my dips or like I'm super anxious, I am useless. <laughs> like, 
it like if I can get up and eat something, it's a self-care day. Like <laughs> I need a like a standing ovation. Um, and I found someone who is like that, and I you know found someone who will give ninety five percent in the relationship when I can only get five. Just think about it. It is so important. I just I think that there's so many people out there who um, who are in relationships that in the grand scheme of things aren't helping your mental health um if you walk into one like i just recently did a video how to or sorry when to tell your significant other that you have mental illness so this is kind of like a little side note to that thought um what it's like a little inside peek into the things that you have to think about when you are in a relationship with mental illness i early on quickly identified things that are important to me in a relationship what i need to live my best life and to thrive and to continue on this journey of uh, treatment and recovery and there you know there were just certain th certain elements certain certain things i think you need, it's important to be with somebody who is compassionate and um will be you know supportive but also do their own research on your disorder and see how they can best help you and be interested in it and you know also know what it's about so that they can help you in the day to day me for example like i have a binder where i have to write in um like my mood and my energy level and what time i wake up and when i eat you know in a calendar and my partner like He'll, he'll always, you know, hey, did you fill in your day today? And I'll, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, like I forgot and I'll do it right away. Like it's these kinds of things. It is a partnership. Like you, you support each other and want the best for each other. And I know that sometimes with, with my disorder, I just, I, I approach situations differently <laughs> um, or I have a different way of just, a thought process and sometimes I need someone who is you know kind of just my rock I need a rock and I found someone who was a rock and I just I want you to find your rock and be with your rock <laughs> I need a rock and uh, I've been with lots of people who couldn't be that for me and that is so fine like some people have so much going on they're just not there spiritually emotionally they can't get there for you and that is fine because it is not their job it is not their job to be there for me. You send them away and you wish them love and luck and happiness. Um, but you know, it, so it is important to me. So that's what I was kind of looking for. And I think that you should look at relationships this way. You should look at your current relationship this way or entering a relationship this way and just never settle and do what's best for you long term. Thank you guys so much. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>